So in the previous video, we had wrapped up our discussion on the concept of limits, what it is that they are, and how it is that they can be evaluated. So today we'll be turning a totally new leaf altogether and introducing a new concept which, which I had mentioned in the very first video that I had uploaded to this channel, Introduction to Limits. And in that video, I had mentioned that there are two fundamental problems when it comes to calculus. One of them is finding the area under the curve of any given curve that you'd like. This is a method called integration, and it'll give you an exact area. No matter what the curve is, you will always find the exact area under that curve using integrals. And the other problem is finding the slope at a line at any given point on that line. Now, up until now, we only know the slope formula that's going to apply to linear curves. If we wanted to apply this formula right over here, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, it will only ever work for straight lines. It doesn't work for anything else. So what we'll be doing is modifying it very slightly using this graph right over here in order to make it work for pretty much any curve it is that we'd like. So here we have an initial x value, which will act as our x1. Here we have an x with an infinitely small increase in x, which we will call h in this case. So we have x and then we have x plus h. Here we have the outputs of the function, which are f of x and f of x plus h. Now say it is that I wanted to find the slope of this graph at this specific point right over here. If I were to take this point right over here and use it as reference, use that as my y2, and then this as my y1, I would have an approximation of the slope, but it would be a pretty poor approximation. So if we tried substituting pieces of this graph into our initial slope formula, essentially what it is that we would have is we would have our y2, which would be our f of x plus h, our y1, which would be f of x, our x2, which is just going to be x plus h, and then our x1, which is going to be x. So if we substituted all of those in their places for the slope formula, what it is that we would be left with is f of x plus h as a y2 minus y1, which is just f of x over x plus h which will act as our, y2, our x2 minus x. You notice right over here in the denominator that x's can be cancelled out. So we will be left with f of x plus h minus f of x in the numerator and h in the denominator. And what we want to do in order to make this approximation as perfect as possible is we want to bring the two points as close together as we can. If I were to take the slope of the curve using these two points right over here, it would be an approximation, but not really a good one. If I brought the two points closer together, then we would have a better approximation, but still not a really good one. If we brought them even closer together, then we would have a much better approximation. So what we want to do is we want to bring these points so infinitely close together, or make the increase in h so infinitely small that we can't even tell the difference. So what we want to do is we want to introduce the concept of a limit, which we had introduced in the previous section altogether, and we want to make the increase in x approach zero, so that the distance between the two points is essentially zero. So what it is that we'll be doing in order to bring these two points so infinitely close together is we will take a limit as the increase in x approaches zero. So the limit as h approaches zero for f of x plus h minus f of x over h is what we call the limit definition of a derivative. So let's do one practice problem in order to, actually a couple of practice problems in order to allow the idea of a derivative to sink in. You may need a little bit of space right over here. So let's erase, uh, you know what, let's just erase this and then rewrite it later. Limit definition of a derivative is defined as the limit as h approaches zero for f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And the very first problem that we will be doing, actually let me give you a couple of steps that you can follow for pretty much any limit definition problem you can ever be given. So steps for taking derivatives, one.
So I know it looks like a lot, however the steps are going to go exactly like this. It's actually a really easy three step process. All it is that you really need to do is you need to substitute in x plus h wherever it is that you see x in the initial function. So say we had the function f of x is equal to x squared. Essentially what we would do in order to substitute in for x plus h is wherever it is that we see x, replace it with x plus h. So this becomes x plus h squared. Afterward, you're going to have to distribute it a little bit in order to cancel out all of the like terms. So x plus h squared will be distributed to become x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distribution is always going to be necessary when solving limit definition of derivative problems. Afterward, once it is that you've done that, you're going to subtract off the initial function, which in this case would just be x squared. So if we wanted to subtract this off, what we would have is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If we were to subtract off our initial f of x, we would subtract off just x squared. Then we would cancel out all of these like terms right over here, and we are going to be left with 2x plus, wait, 2xh plus h squared over h in the denominator. And in the third step, what you'll be doing is factoring an h out of the numerator and canceling it out with the h in the denominator. That way it is that we don't end up dividing by zero. This will always be possible no matter what the case is. You can always factor out an h and cancel it with the denominator. So if we were to factor this out, we would be left with 2x plus h multiplied by h over h. These two h's will cancel each other out, and all we'll be left with is 2x plus h, and then we will take the limit as h approaches 0 for whatever is left over, so 2x plus h. And as h approaches 0, this h term is going to disappear altogether, so all we'll be left with is 2x. And 2x is what it is that we call to be the derivative of the function x squared. And just a little bit of notation to be familiar with, just as we did in the previous problem, our initial f of x was equal to x squared. When we take the derivative of a function, we write it down as f prime of x, which is essentially f, little apostrophe up here, of x, which is equal to 2x. This apostrophe right over here is telling you that this is the derivative of f of x. This question is asking us to evaluate the slope of the function f of x is equal to x to the third minus 4x at x is equal to 2. So f of x is equal to x to the third minus 4x at x equals 2. It's telling us that at x equals 2, it wants us to evaluate the slope. So what we can do in this case is first, let's find out what our f of x plus h is. f of x plus h is essentially substitute x plus h in for wherever it is that you see x in the function. So here we have x plus h to the third power minus 4 times x plus h. If we were to distribute this, which we will end up having to later on, well, do it right now. We want our f of x plus h. x plus h to the third is going to be distributed as x to the third uh, plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h to the third. That's our x plus h to the third term. Now we need to distribute this 4 into the x and the h right over here. So we're going to be left with minus 4x minus 4h. Afterward, we want to subtract off the initial function, which is x to the third minus 4x. So let's leave a little bit of room right over here. If we want to subtract off the initial function, we're going to have a big subtraction sign and open our brackets. We're going to be left with x to the third minus 4x. And notice that we are subtracting off the initial functions. That means we're subtracting off the initial function, which means that we will be taking this negative sign and distributing it to the entire function. 
that means that we're subtracting negative 4x or rather adding 4x to this. So we have an x to the third right over here which is going to cancel out with this x to the third. Afterward we can we have a negative 4x over here but we are adding 4x so this also cancels with this. So what we'll be left with is pretty much everything else that's right over here. There's nothing else that we can cancel out in the numerator so we'll be left with 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h to the third minus 4h. All of this is going to be divided by h as denoted by the formula. You can factor an h out of the numerator. So you're going to be left with 3x squared plus 3x h squared plus h squared minus 4h. Wait h, yeah, we already factored the h out, over h. We can cancel the h in the numerator and the denominator out with each other. And what we'll be left with is 3x squared plus 3x h squared plus h squared minus 4. And in order to finish the job, what we need to do is take the limit as h approaches 0. So if we were to take the limit as h approaches 0 for whatever is left over, 3x squared plus 3x h squared plus h squared minus 4. These terms will go straight to 0 because they're being multiplied by h and all we'll be left with is 3x squared minus 4. So the derivative of this function right over here is 3x squared minus 4. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4. And the question is asking us to evaluate the slope at x is equal to 2 for this function. So in order to evaluate a slope, whenever it is that you have a derivative, all you need to do is you need to plug in the x value into the derivative of that function. We have the derivative already. All we need to do is plug in x is equal to 2. So f prime of 2 is equal to 3 times 2 squared minus 4. That's going to come to 12 minus 4. So the slope at x is equal to 2 for this function is 8. We want to find the derivative of the following function. So find f prime of x when it is that f of x is going to be equal to square root of 1 minus 2x. Minus 2x. First, let's determine what our x plus h is going to be. If we took f of x plus h, we would substitute in for x wherever it is that we see it, x plus h. So it would be the square root of 1 minus 2 times x plus h. Simplify this and clean it up a little bit. We'll be left with the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 2h. And this is our f of x plus h. So what we can do now is we can take this and substitute it in to our formula. So we want to take f of x plus h, which is the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 2h, subtract off our initial function, which is f of x, minus the square root of 1 minus 2x over h. And we want to take the limit as h approaches 0, but we'll end up doing that later. So what we'll do in this case, because we can't cancel out any, any common factors right away, what we need to do is multiply by the conjugate as we have done in the previous section when evaluating limits. So we are going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 1 minus 2x minus 2h plus the square root of 1 minus 2x over the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 2h plus the square root of 1 minus 2x. So all of this will be distributed very nicely. It's going to leave us with 1 minus 2x minus 2h minus this function right over here minus 1 minus 2x over h multiplied by this entire thing right over here. 
So the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 2h plus the square root of 1 minus 2x. So in this case, we are subtracting off negative 2x, which is the same thing as adding 2x. So this negative 2x cancels out with this positive 2x. 1 minus 1, these are going to cancel as well. So all we'll be left with is negative 2h over h multiplied by this nasty thing right over here, minus 2x minus 2h plus the square root of 1 minus 2x. Now we can factor out, or rather we don't need to factor out because all we're going to be left with is h in the numerator. So we can cancel this h out with, in the numerator with the 1 in the denominator. All we'll be left with is negative 2 over this entire mess in the denominator. The square root of 1 minus 2x minus 2h plus 1 minus 2x. And what we can do now is we can take the limit as h approaches 0 because it's not going to leave us with a 0 denominator anymore. So we take the limit as h approaches 0. This h is going to disappear. It's going to become 0. So all we'll be left with is negative 2 over the same term repeating itself. Minus 2x plus the square root of 1 minus 2x. So we can join these together. It's going to leave us with negative 2 over 2 times 1 minus 2x. These 2's will cancel each other out. And all we'll be left with is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x. And that is the derivative of our initial function. The derivative of the square root of 1 minus 2x is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x. And with all that being said, congratulations on your introduction to derivatives, and we will be moving on to a couple more examples, I guess. We didn't really do much in this video other than introduce the concept. So we'll do a couple more limit definition problems and then move on to the differentiation rules, which make taking derivatives a lot easier. It gives you a lot of tools, a lot of shortcuts, and that's the really exciting part of this course.